Okay, so we're going to be talking about everyone's favourite dictators today and if you can read the title, it does say dictator wholesome moments. So don't come crying into the comment section about how these guys were really evil. We're not here to talk about that. We're only here to talk about the good that they did, if any. But before we get into it, I have to put on my dictator garbs. Nice. Now that I look the part, let's get into it. Okay, starting with Fidel Castro. Did you know that he really liked Dairy Cow- Okay, no. I'm kidding. Every other stick animation channel has probably made like 5 videos about 10 ways Fidel Castro survived CIA assassinations. Or another clone of Salmonella's original Fidel video. Today, we'll be talking about his Euro step. He bawled so hard, he almost made his fellow communists rethink their allegiance to the revolution. He apparently used to pull this move all the time and Che Guevara used to seethe so hard about it that he wrote about it in his diary entries. Here's one excerpt of his ceaseless coping about the absolute baller Castro. In his frequent basketball matches, Fidel has started using a new move he simply calls the step. It is undeniably effective, yet is its goodness equally undeniable? As revolutionaries, we must not merely pay attention to ends, but to means. I worry that this flash and pomp is not befitting of the revolutionary leader. It serves to separate him too much from those caught in the chains of a maudlin life, marred by oppression and economic strife. Yes, it leads to a basket, but at what cost to the communal spirit? President of Yappersville himself. But what did you expect when you realise this is what he looks like? Negative cantal tilt, non-symmetrical face and I'm also willing to bet he's got a Norwood hidden under that cap. His shit is probably pushed way back. Okay, I know this is a really bad photo of him and he looks relatively normal in other photos but we're just going to pretend he looks like this for the sake of my cooking. Anyway, I actually managed to find video of this legendary Euro step from Castro and you can see that he kinda does it. Personally, I wouldn't have called that a foul and he shouldn't have got the three throw but you probably don't get to argue with the Dairy King himself. Also, he double dribbled but that's neither here nor there. But the fact that he was a baller is definitely a wholesome moment in my book. Next we have Bashar al-Assad which I'm guessing a lot of people don't actually know but he had some serious motion. You've heard of warfare, lawfare, but probably not hoefare. He had hoes lining up to email him flirty messages and he would just delete them and email his wife instead. Over 3000 of his emails were leaked and it was found that he had replied to none of these hoes with some even sending risque images and texts along the lines of so cute I miss you. That's a lot of yous, you trifling hoe. Comparing the contents of Assad's emails and Hillary Clinton's emails, the night and day. In one of Clinton's emails, she says she's gonna sacrifice a chicken to an ancient Babylonian demon, which is actually true, look it up. And the most out there thing in Assad's emails were that he had women tripping over themselves to see him, which he ignored. There was even the daughter of the Syrian ambassador to the UN who emailed him, I'm coming today, I will arrive there tomorrow, and I wanna see you after tomorrow. I can't wait. No excuses. Smiling face emoticon. Miss you, you, you. Please, please, please. But instead of replying to these wenches, he was busy instead sketching large pink and red love hearts that he emailed to his wife. His wife would then write him poems and here's just one of them. Sometimes at night, when I look to the sky, I start thinking of you and ask myself why. Why do I love you? I think and smile because I know the list could run on for miles. And most of you can't even get a text back. How does that make you feel, huh? He also sent her country music videos such as the Blake Shelton song, God Gave Me You. Okay, this man had some serious game back in 2012. Shit, I'm taking notes as I write this script for the video. He also apparently used a third party to bypass US sanctions and bought the iPad game Real Racing 2, as well as Chris Brown music, proving once again that gamers are indeed an oppressed group. His wife was called Asma Al-Assad and he had her saved as Triple A. And this is just speculation from me, but I like to think he called her Triple A Battery, but that's just what I would do. Anyway, it's a pretty safe bet to assume that a lot of those attempts to seduce the dictator were probably honeypots, and the fact that he stayed faithful to his wife is definitely a wholesome moment in my opinion. Next, we have Muammar Gaddafi, who didn't survive his CIA-backed revolution, but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about his visit to Italy before the Civil War, 
in which he was attending a World Food Summit. When he arrived in Italy, one of his aides asked an Italian model agency for 500 women between the ages of 18 to 35 years, and they were kept in the dark about who it was they were going to see, but it was generally assumed that it was going to be a party. However, there was a dress code of no miniskirts or low-necked dresses. Gaddafi then had them all seated in a huge hall, where he then lectured them for two hours on religion and tried to convert them to Islam. Dude was on a side quest right before a world meeting about food insecurity. Yes, famines around the world are bad, but he still had time to play Captain Sabaho. His all-female staff then handed out Qurans, and this is an image of some of them leaving the quote-unquote party. This image is just so funny to me, especially because the orange one in the front is clearly mad, whereas the one on the far right is beaming with joy. Very different responses. He also paid them all 50 euros and lectured them on how women in the West were treated and stated that women were often used as pieces of furniture, changed when it pleases men. Was he an OG feminist? Who knows. Anyways, when he then went to the World Food Summit that he originally came for, he immediately used his time to criticise the West for looting natural resources of devastated nations under the guise of humanitarian relief, which actually does have some truth to it. This man came to Italy, proselytised some hoes, then argued about Western hypocrisies, then leaves without further explanation. Definitely a wholesome moment, and I wonder if any of the 500 models actually converted or not, but I guess we'll never know. Alright now, let's get into the meat and potatoes. Hitler wholesome moments. He did have a few if we're being unbiased. He was the first to pioneer for animal rights and increased the punishments for those who are cruel to animals. He also revived the German economy post Treaty of Versailles, managing to reduce unemployment from 30% in 1933 to just 5% in 6 years, reversing the negative trend of gross national income that was as a result of the global depression. You probably already know this, but he was the first to run public anti-smoking campaigns, correctly identifying the risks to health that smoking posed and encouraging Germans to quit. And um, that's, that's probably all you can really say about him when it comes to strictly wholesome moments, but uh, yeah, that's Hitler. Our final dictator will be Stalin, who some people idolise to this day still, and I mean if you can get past the whole gulags and the engineering of the Holodomer, giving him a kill count of at least 9 million, he wasn't that bad. No, yeah, he was, he was pretty bad, but he did have his wholesome moments, one of them being that he was a poet in his earlier years. As a child, he was very fascinated with literature, and even memorised the famous Georgian medieval poem, The Knight in Panther's Skin, which is around 1,600 verses long, and takes about 8 hours to read. So, he really liked his poetry, if you couldn't tell. At 17, whilst training for priesthood, he took a selection of his poems to Prince Ilya Kavkavadze, and it impressed him so that he had five of Stalin's poems published under the pseudonym Sosello. The prince described Stalin as a young man with burning eyes, which is pretty prophetic, to be honest, even if unintentionally. The poems were then printed and admired by many all the way up until the 1970s, where the majority were published anonymously, so that most didn't actually know it was Stalin's work that they were reading. He also apparently used his fame as Sosello to acquire information necessary for a bank heist in 1907, during which his gang killed around 40 people for a large shipment of money, which I mean is less wholesome, to be honest. Going from a poet to a bank robber is quite the career change, and it's kind of depressing if you think about it. However, if you'd like to laugh, you can check out my Stupidest Scientific Theories videos, in which Lysenko, one of Stalin's top Soviet scientists, came up with some of the stupidest scientific theories, going so far as to state the idea of mutation in genes was a bourgeoisie invention, and pioneered his plant communism theory which was a major cause of the famines that plagued the Soviet Union. If you want to support me in my quest to become a dictator, like the video and subscribe and I'll give you special treatment when we take over. But anyways, thanks for watching, hope to see you in the next one, bye.